Scientists have been trying to answer the question, what causes aging, for decades. And the original question that we asked, which is, what causes aging, we never answered. Dr. David Sinclair attempts to answer that question. The way I was thinking about uh, aging uh, was in terms of information, because really you want to break it down to just the, the fundamentals of why we age. And the rest, the rest is interesting in detail. The information theory of aging, which I'm calling it, it, it separates the two main types of information in the cell. The digital information is the genetic code, the DNA, and it's based on four letters, A, C, T, G. That's a digital code, it's not binary, like a computer, it's quaternary. And digital information is extremely long-lived. Uh, it's the reason we switched from analog to digital in the, in the 2000s. Now the other type of information is analog, and that's the epigenetic information, the information in the cell that tells which of the genes should be turned on and off. The analogy that I like is the compact disc or a, or a DVD. It's a disc that had digital information, but there was a reader that could read that information with a laser beam, but that laser beam was analog. It was, it was skipping around and it could miss spots, and it got worse as the CD or the DVD got scratched over time, so that now the, the player couldn't access the information. It really represents what I think happens during aging to a cell, that the, the songs on the compact disc are still there, our genome is largely intact, but the reader, the epigenome, is unable to read the right songs at the right time and it's skipping around and hitting one or two bad notes is fine, but eventually during aging it, it's just a mess. The moment that we're born, uh, and even you would, uh, I could argue earlier, there is a process of aging that is stochastic, meaning it's, it's occurring due to random events. But the reaction to those events, which I'll get to in a minute, the reaction is predictable because it's a defense response. But that ultimately leads to noise in the epigenome, noise that leads to the loss of information. Sinclair decided to test his theory by creating more epigenetic noise, more CD scratches in a mouse. And we said, if we create artificial cuts in the genome and distract these proteins, these epigenetic proteins, the theory predicts, and the yeast results predict, that we'll get an old mouse, just a prematurely aged one. And so we did the experiment, and it actually, where uh, you've, you've, you're interviewing me at the point where we've written up the work after 10 years, and we're going to be hopefully publishing it soon. So what we're going to be reporting to the world is that when you do cut the genome, and we do it for just three weeks in a young mouse, nothing bad happens to those mice at first. They're fine. It's as if you got, a, got an x-ray. You don't feel the x-ray. You walk away. But I can tell you, based on our research, things do happen when you get an x-ray that are long-lasting. You get changes to the epigenome. So in the mouse, what we started to see in the first month after the treatment was, yeah, stuff started to happen. Uh, they lost a bit of hair on their nose. Their skin got a little bit wrinklier. Ten months later, they were really old and every aspect of aging that happens to a, to a mouse normally was now happening 150% faster. And when we dove into those tissues at the histological level, biochemical level, physiological level, and even at the DNA methylation clock level, so how old is this mouse actually, uh, that 150% was consistent. All of those aspects of aging down to the molecular clock of aging was 50%, 150% more than it should be based on the mice that we didn't treat, its litter mates, which is a remarkable finding. What's interesting is because cloning works, it means you can take a cacophony uh, or a scratch CD and somehow polish it or make the piano player play the tune as it did at the beginning and restore youth. And it's somehow remembered somehow remembered. I knew that we could clone animals. Uh, I knew that uh, axolotls, when you cut off a limb, could regrow a limb as though it was very young. And I also knew that human embryos can repair themselves 
if you damage them, but when you get older you lose that ability. So what is it about those systems that we're missing? And so we went on a search for those genes that could reset the age of cells, and I think we've found a few now. How difficult do you see it in, in applying them in the right way? We said, well, we don't want to turn ourselves into a stem cell that would, that would be a tumor, but maybe we could just tickle the system, tweak it, so that the cells would go back partially towards being young, but not all the way that, that they're embryonic. But it tells us that there's some universal process that controls the pace of aging and its reversal. In your book you say that you anticipate that curing aging will be easier than curing cancer. I think we will have a chance to slow down aging, uh, if not reverse it, before we cure every type of cancer. And slowing aging down actually addresses every type of cancer. The cause of cancer is aging. Aging is relatively simple. We just put three Yamanaka factors into a mouse and got vision back. That's really important because if you can reverse aging and the function of the hardest part of the body, then it probably will work for the rest of the body as well. We're playing with fire, right. but we need to use fire. Right? The only reason that we're, we now live in an age where we can have a computer on a wristwatch is that we, we played with fire. Uh, but you need to be careful. When this book comes out, what would be their biggest beef with, with what you're proposing? Because, you know. Hmm. We do reach for the stars, we do swing for the fences. Will I get attacked? I'll certainly get attacked because it, it's putting epigenetic changes above other causes of aging. And right now the field has a set of hallmarks of aging. Uh, I mentioned some earlier, the, the mitochondria, the, the telomere changes, the nutrient sensing, stem cells, uh, senescent cells, the list goes on. And you're saying, let's ask the next question. Why do they occur? That's the next question. What causes those to occur? Is there a unified model that says this is why all this stuff happens? And I, th I think I've been successful. We'll see.